The breaking news is that former Prasar Bharti CEO has slammed the survey of the BBC offices, saying, and I quote, outrage over the tax survey of BBC in India is misplaced. Now to this, Law Minister Kiran Rijiju has hit back, saying, and I quote, expectedly the same ecosystem got outraged. These people trust foreign news agencies, but they won't trust Indian agencies. They swear by the BBC, but they won't believe the Indian courts. They'll even abuse the Supreme Court if one adverse judgment is passed. We're crossing over to CNN News 18 senior editor Palavi Ghosh to tell us more. Palavi, can you tell us more about Rijiju's response and the significance of his statement? It's important because of late the law minister has been used and uh, has been commenting on many of the def and defending really the government. And here he's talking the context of uh, outrage by a certain section on allegations that one, that there is a link between the so-called banning of the BBC documentary, two parts of which. And the second, of course, is those IT surveys which are being carried on at the BBC offices, both in Delhi as in Mumbai. Uh, the opposition parties certainly have ganged up together and they've said that every time someone questions the government, you have the ED, the CBI, the income tax department unleashed by this government to try and silence its critics. This is a counter which is being put forward by the law minister that there is a particular ecosystem. And it's interesting because even the prime minister had referred to this during his motion of thanks in the Rajya Sabha. There is a particular e ecosystem which always pushes for one narrative and that narrative is contrary to the idea of India's growth story. And Pallavi, beyond this, the, the law minister had also made a similar statement when it came to the appointment of a retired Supreme Court judge as a governor. That's when he had first started attacking the ecosystem getting outraged, correct? Yes, I mean, that's what I've been saying. I mean, you know, uh, the law minister has awfully become the most strongest deployment of defense for the government. And as a law minister also, he, in the context of the appointment of Governor Nasi to Andhra Pradesh, has said that there is a credibility factor, there are merits, and as a government's prerogative also to decide who should become the governor. But again, there is one particular group of people, and uh, especially the opposition political parties, who completely forget history, they forget precedent, and they instead all do to look for every opportunity to attack and criticize the government, even when it's not warranted. Absolutely. And a few follow-up questions for you, Pallavi. Now, what we do know about the BBC, the survey on the BBC offices, is we had earlier reported that the BBC had been on the IT radar for a long time over violations of the transfer pricing cause clause. Would you be able to tell us more about that? Uh, what the clarification which has come in from the IT department is that first of all you cannot call it trade these are merely surveys and a survey essentially just goes and makes an assessment of if there has been any violation or not this is likely to be followed up and could be followed up somehow more detailed questioning by the IT department in terms of a memorandum being issued what is being questioned by the opposition parties over here is the timing that it's coming very close on the heels of the B2 BBC documentaries which are perceived to be anti-government and anti-prime minister. And this is an attempt being made to arm twist and silence the BBC. The critics are saying that if indeed there were irregularities which were noticed by the income tax department earlier, why was then an action not taken then? Why is it being taken now? So the timing is very suspicious according to opposition. But IT department sources have been telling us that it's got nothing to do with the BBC documentaries. These are ongoing procedural matters. They take their time and they are done when they have to be done. Is it likely that we're going to see uh, the war of words continue now that Rijiju has tweeted out? Well, I mean, there are state elections which are coming up. Parliament is going to resume from 13th of March. I think there is there's going to be uh, the war of words because it's also a question of political relevance for both the sides. For the BJP, it is certainly going to be used to hit out at the opposition. And if you remember what the Prime Minister himself had said, that all of them are ganging up against that one person. And the BJP politically will make the point that every time we are trying to probe irregularities, this is the way the opposition parties react. Mm -hmm. And if, and if ever there is a global anti-India story, we find the opposition parties supporting them rather than supporting their own country. Absolutely. Pallavi, thank you so much for joining us and for giving us all of that important information and for helping our viewers with the context. Now, we're also being joined by BJP's Tom Vadakan on the line. Mr. Vadakan, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18. The breaking development is the war of words that's taking place between the former CEO of Prasar Bharti and Kiran Rijiju. Would you be able to give us your first reaction to this, please? Well, the reality is there for everybody to see. This narrative is being built uh, by the British um, Corporation. Uh, it's like the East India Company. I mean, 
even their member of parliament has gone on record saying that this is a hit job. And uh, the prime minister of that country has also gone on record saying that he does not take this into, uh, take this seriously. Now, the point here is, our ecosystem is now trying to repay uh, what BBC has been doing for them. Whatever narrative they've built has been fine. There's been an ecosystem in the British corporate uh, BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, where they reflect what these views are expressed. Now there's this uh, situation where the ecosystem is now in reverse action. So they are now trying to uh, defend the BBC for the undefensible. They don't trust the Indian media. They are ready to trust the BBC, the New York Times. And what have you? And what kind of stories do they uh, uh, broadcast? Everything negative of this country. Anybody going by the BBC's broadcast would imagine India in, is in the ch- snake charmer's uh, period, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, this kind of narrative that they built is unfortunate. And the TRP is sinking. The BBC's TRP is sinking across Europe. And now they have this Chinese... Uh, sponsor who has been uh, was spending money on them. And naturally, a narrative that is anti-India is projected. Now, the, the hard reality is the matter is sub And then we have these uh, different opinions coming from the ecosystem saying, well, but for the BBC, there would be no news in India. And BBC is the, uh, you know, icon for them. The reality is much uh, different from the from what these people express. It's unfortunate that this country is now no more uh, part of that East India Company, and the British Corporation is trying to say that well, we won't pay taxes, we will do all sorts of uh, activities, mm-hmm. and then even the income tax, which is a civil matter, and the matter is being investigated. Let the reports come out, and then start reacting to it. But no, you have to react to it. You have from Bengal, you have reactions coming in. You have reactions coming across the country. But then you don't believe your own media. You don't believe your own country. You don't believe your Supreme Court. Your institutions are uh, uh, insulted by these corporations. All right, Mr. Varakan, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18 and for giving us your perspective about this matter. Now with this, we're going to be shifting focus because there's some more